Hi, and welcome to jasonyalofsky.com. I'm Jay Yadlovsky. So have you ever had an image that was low resolution, it was all pixelated, didn't look so good, but you wanted to print it out large, say an 8x10? Well, that's the case here with this image. I want to print it out at an 8x10, but here, even at the size that it's at, which is a little over 5.5 inches by a little less than 7 inches, it just looks pixelated and, and uh, it just doesn't look good. And it wouldn't reproduce well if we tried to print it as an 8x10. So, a couple steps I would do here to just uh, help make it um, a cleaner, better image. Uh, first thing I want to do is unlock the background layer. Next, I want to come up to Image and resize the image. And uh, currently, you can see that it's only 72 pixels per inch. So, typically for printing, you want to use 240, but I like to just go with 300. And I'm going to click OK. So now Photoshop's going to resize this image so that it's 300 pixels per inch instead of 72. I'm going to zoom out here with Command-0. And the next thing I want to do is change my canvas size to be 8 by 10 so I know how big I need to make this image. So with 8 by a height of 10, I'm going to click OK. Command-0 to zoom out. Now I'm going to take this layer and I want to uh, scale it up to fit as much of it as I can in the 8x10 um, canvas that I set up. So I'm going to drag it up here to the top corner. Command T to transform. I'm going to grab it by this corner down over here. And uh, I'm going to hold the shift key because that will scale it proportionately. And I'll just drag it down as far as I can and uh, without cutting anything off on the edges there. So you can see we'll have to fill in a little bit down here. Um, but that's okay. We can leave that for now. So the first thing I want to do is extract this text and put it on its own layer. So that way we can have good, clean, crisp black text uh, and graphics to put back on top of this image once we're done. So in order to do that, I want to select my magic wand tool. I want to have a 3x3 three three average sample size, a tolerance of 10. Uh, maybe we'll move that up a little bit. Let's do a tolerance of 12. See how that works out. And I'm just going to select one of the black areas here. And then once I have one area selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down here to similar. And I'm going to select that. And you see it selects most of our text here. There's a few little areas in here and there um, that aren't selected. If you zoom in there, you'll see those pixels are actually a bluish kind of color. Um, so let me right click and let's try similar again and just see if that picks them up. Kind of picked up a little bit more of it. So I'm just going to go with that for now for uh, the purpose of this tutorial, but you could go in there and you would select all the areas so everything is um, smooth, clean, all your letters are, are clear, and there's no gaps in them uh, like we see here. But in this case, we're just going to move forward. So what I want to do next is create a path out of my selection. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to come down here to Make Work Path. I'm going to select that. Tolerance of two pixels. I'm going to change that to, uh, yeah, we could leave two pixels. That'll be fine. We're going to let that make the path. And then you can see over here in Work Path, uh, we now have a path in there. So if I just click below it, we'll deselect our path. Next thing I want to do is uh, blur our background layer so we can get rid of all the pixelation that we see both around the letters and up in the top here. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now the amount is up to you. It's you know you can blur it as much as you'd like. Uh, in this case, it looks like maybe like four pixels is uh, looks pretty good. So we're gonna try that for now. I'm gonna click OK on that. And here we have our background layer blurred. It looks pretty good around the letters. I can't really see pixelation. Uh, if I zoom in a little bit, maybe you can see a little bit. So you know it's up to you on how how much blur you want to give the image there. So next we want to fill in the area that's here, and it looks like I didn't drag my selection quite wide enough, or my image quite wide enough, so there's a little little section on the side over here where we can fill in too. And to use that, I want to use Content-Aware Fill. So what I want to do is collect or select my uh, Square Marquee tool here, make a selection of this bottom area. You want to be sure to include some of the, the texture or pixels above the blank area so Photoshop knows what to fill the blank area with. Once I made my selection, I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and I'm going to make sure I have Content Aware selected here in my Fill dialog box. I'm going to click OK. 
and we'll give it a second here to fill in that area and then we'll go through and do the same on this side so that way our our image is a full 8x10 and we'll be ready to continue on in the process. I'm going to select this side over here, shift delete, content aware, fill. Give that a chance to fill in. Deselect by pressing command D. So now we have the full size of our image and uh, you know I think it looks pretty good. So now we want to add the text back on top of our background layer here. So I make a new layer and I'm going to call this text. And in order to select the text, I want to come down to the Paths um, panel here and select my work path. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to right click, and I want to fill inside the path that we created with black. So here we have black. We want to use black. Um, you can leave all the rest of this as it is, feather radius of zero. I'm going to check anti-alias. Click OK. Give that. Now if I just deselect it, you see it kind of thickened everything up a little bit um, and just kind of filled it in. So next we want to also add a stroke around the outside of the text, which will help smooth the, the edge of the text out a little bit more. Now when you stroke the edge of a path, um, we're going to use the brush settings to do that. So I'm going to go into my brush tool and just check on my settings and see what that looks like here. So I have, I have a, uh, a hard brush selected, and I have it about 8 pixels. So we're going to start with that. Um, I want to come back over to our paths panel here, select our path. I'm going to right click and you see stroke path here. So you select that. Now the tool, you, have, you can use different tools to stroke the path. In this case, I'm going to use the brush, which will use the settings that I just set um, in, the brush, in the brush tool before. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll see it just thickened up that text just a little bit. And if I just unselect the text there, see it kind of made it a little more bold and brought it out a little bit more, smoothed out the edges a little. Now, depending on the size of the brush that you use, if we made it smaller, then the text would just, you know, it wouldn't have expanded as much. And really, it's just something for you to play with. And, you know, you, you pick what you think looks good and what you like. So now the last step, or well, the second to last step I'd like to do with this image is just add a little more contrast to the background here. For me, it's a little too um, washed out looking. It just looks like it could use some more contrast. So to do that, I'm going to add a curves layer. And we can even try some of the presets here. Um, and I'm just going to try medium contrast. I think that looks pretty good. I like how it just brought in some more of the color and just made it a little bit richer. And since we pulled the text out and um, you know filled the path and stroked on the path, then that made the text stand out a lot more than where we started. So the final thing I want to do is just sharpen everything up a little bit. So I'm going to combine all the layers with Shift, Option, Command, E. That's going to create a new layer and merge everything below it together. Then I'm going to come up here to Filter. I'm going to go to Sharpen. And Smart Sharpen. Okay, and I'm going to uh, I'll boost this up to, say, 200. 200 pixels, and then I'll just leave everything else as it is for now. I'm going to click OK, and we'll give it a moment here to go through and, and sharpen the image. It may take a minute or so, um, depending on you know the size of the image that you're making or the resolution. So we'll go ahead and let this run. Okay, so now that the sharpening has run, we have our final image here, and you can see we have nice, crisp, uh, clear black text. It doesn't look pixelated. Uh, we added a little bit of contrast, and uh, we'll be able to print this image at 8x10 size and have it come out, you know, a good quality that's not pixelated and that looks good. And let me see. So just a quick uh, before and after. I'll open up um, the original, original image here. So here you can see here's the before, and here's the after. You can see we just added the contrast, increased the size of the image. And I think with this uh, image here that we created, you'll be able to print that at 8x10 and have no problems. So I hope this was helpful in showing you how to enlarge an image that's not a great quality to start with, not a good resolution to start with. And uh, if there's any other things you'd like to learn how to do, feel free to leave a comment below and I can create a tutorial about it. And I thank you for watching.